Do this one thing to attract your dream relationship. To be able to attract their dream relationship. And I'm going to give you the whole tea here and now. So if you really want to get serious to understand what you need to do to attract this dream relationship, listen up. It's all subconscious reprogramming. Now, what do I mean by that? The subconscious is literally in charge of 95% of your reality, meaning that when it comes to the relationships you're attracting, the partners you're attracting, the treatment you're attracting, the commitment you're attracting, everything is actually all coming from the subconscious. Meaning it's got nothing to do with actually blaming men or women, depending on your preference and their inability to show up for you. I'm gonna give you a very controversial example. Think about a narcissist. Now, here's the thing that I don't like about everyone is you pushed out and why I don't believe in it. You are not a narcissist if you're attracting a narcissist. A narcissist gets attracted to its prey, <laughs> not another narcissist. So when it comes to this, what I'm essentially saying is we all have trauma. We all have stories and programmings from mom, dad, brother, sister, society, race, socioeconomic status, upbringing, the whole nine yards. And these programmings are essentially ruling the people that we are attracting, the commitment that we are attracting. Meaning if I picked up from mom and dad, from my primary caregivers, or from my environment, my surroundings, my school system, anything like that, that love is hard, relationships are difficult, men lie, women cheat, men steal. I'm going to find myself in precarious situations attracting those types of individuals because whatever I believe to be true will be what I attract. Zero exceptions. So when it comes to my narcissist example, you can use that example or even comment down below your own example. I'd love to understand what are the types of individuals that you're attracting. Let's say for an example, I have an I'm not good enough wound, meaning some part of me due to the fact that I have been a kind, caring, giving woman and has overgiven, overcared, overcompensated to prove my sense of self-worth, to prove that I am good enough and wifey material at some type of level, is going to end up attracting to her men to wound me in that exact area. So I want you to ask yourself, how are men wounding you? How are women wounding you? What is the story that you default to? What's the story that you default to? When you give your whole heart to someone else, is it just for you to say to yourself in the end, oh, and I'm still not good enough? No matter what I do, I'm not enough. No matter what I do, I'm not chosen. No matter what I do, men don't want to commit to me long term. What's the story you default to? Because if I have an I'm not good enough wound, I will attract men. I will attract people. I will attract different situations into my life. And this can even bleed into other areas like my friendships, like my family, like my colleagues, like my finances, like my coworkers. And they will end up mirroring to me my not good enoughness. So then I could use them to say that, see, that's exactly why I'm not good enough. See, 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 that's why I'm not good enough. I told you this whole time. See, I told you I wasn't going to be good enough for him. I told you I wasn't going to be good enough for my boss. See, see. And this is going to be the thing that blows your mind. How many different ways how many different possibilities are there for someone to make you feel not good enough probably like 18 quadrillion okay someone could come to me and they could ghost me and that could make me feel not good enough and default to that story someone could come into my life and just want to be in a situation ship with me and that can make me feel not good enough someone could come into my life and then be in and out of my life and try to use me as a revolving door to always have options open someone could come into my life and just mistreat me lie to me 
or be dishonest with their intentions in some type of capacity. And that can make me feel not good enough. I could also feel not good enough just because I'm not attracting the quality or the caliber or the types of men that I would really want to attract. All of these things and like 17 quadrillion more could make me feel not good enough. So if you ever want to reverse engineer how to attract and manifest in your dream relationship, you've got to go back to what are your stories and where are you being wounded by the people that you would really desire. And then start to validate yourself in that area. So if I have the I'm not good enough wound, just remaining consistent, I need to start to have a self-love practice. I need to start to work on my self-concept. I need to start to craft a new identity, a 2.0 version of Persis. How would I be walking, talking, acting, dressing, showing up in my life if I knew 100% that my worth was an inside job, that I get to decide how good enough I I truly, really, sincerely am. And that no matter how other people show up for me or don't show up for me, no matter how people communicate with me, don't communicate with me. No matter whether people choose me or don't choose me. No matter whether the abundance comes or it doesn't come, I am good enough because this is a me thing. There is nobody walking around with Cinderella's magic wand going bippity boppity boo. Okay, now you're good enough. (laughs) You've got a bippity boppity boo when it comes to yourself. And that's how you attract your dream relationship. If you want to learn more about this, and this has been interesting to you, I have now decided to make myself a $100 membership that allows you to go through a complete 180 when it comes to your self-concept transformation so that you can manifest anything that you want in your life in 90 days or less using neuroscience, using neuroplasticity. Not only that, but I recently woke up to an amazing client success story inside of the membership. And she said that her and her husband's marriage was previously like a brother, sister, cold, distant marriage where they're honestly just roommates. They don't want anything to do with one another. And after her going through the self-concept work and my 30 day guide, which gives you a full plan of what to do and how to do this for yourself so you can duplicate these results and even expand on them, her husband is completely obsessed. The link is in my bio to join.